Welcome to the Chapter 1 Online Reading Volunteers Basic Training. Before we start, just a quick note about the training you're about to watch. In February 2023, we changed our organization's name to Chapter 1. We've updated this video with the new Chapter 1 name where we can. However, you may hear or see references to the old program name, TutorMate. Thank you for volunteering your time to the Chapter 1 Online Reading Volunteer Program. This is the first of two webinar trainings and will cover the following. An overview of early literacy, when to expect your student assignment, how to schedule a session, how to start a session, get support and send messages, and child safeguarding information. The second training, Building Confident Readers, will include information that will be helpful as you work with your student throughout the year. Please don't worry about taking any notes during this training. You'll have access to this video and other resources in the eLearning Center. Let's begin by understanding the importance of first grade. First grade is where children are introduced to the structure and rules of the classroom and where the real work of learning begins. First grade is also the reading year and where children are taught foundational reading skills that will set them up for future success. This is the year where children will learn the skills that will take them from learning to read to reading to learn. If a child leaves first grade without a strong foundation in reading skills, that child will likely be left behind before their education truly begins. Walk into a first grade classroom and you'll find a room full of children who love to learn and who believe their possibilities are limitless. Every single day in a child's life has the potential to change who they are forever. As a volunteer tutor, you will help to broaden horizons, challenge stereotypes, and ignite curious minds. When you help your student understand how reading can help them in the future and support their efforts by reading together each week, there really is no limit to what they can achieve. Students come to school from many different circumstances and with many different learning abilities. Some children may come from backgrounds where books and reading are not part of their home lives. Evidence shows that COVID school closures have affected disadvantaged children disproportionately, and these children already faced greater challenges than their more advantaged peers. Research has shown students from low-income backgrounds have been exposed to almost 32 million fewer words than their peers by the time they start school. That translates into a large learning gap in both oral language development and word vocabulary. Developing a child's ability to read requires they learn fundamental strategies of reading, skills taught in every first grade classroom. But learning reading strategies alone is not enough. Children must also spend time reading out loud with someone who can encourage their progress and gently guide them in learning successful reading habits. As you coach your student each week, you are complementing the work of a classroom teacher and helping your student develop in three vital ways. You are giving them the opportunity to practice newly learned skills by spending time reading aloud with you each week. You are building their reading confidence by encouraging their efforts, and you are helping to inspire a love and joy for reading. Teachers really appreciate the one-to-one -one support and consistent regular practice you provide their students with each week. As part of the team, you are a precious asset in the classroom and also act as a positive role model. The most frequently asked question is when do I get my student assignment? The criteria that must be met before students can be assigned to a tutor are, all 10 tutors on your team have registered and passed their background check, teachers have completed the shared schedule, and students have been selected for tutoring. Your start date will vary depending on when your district begins the school year and when teachers complete their skill assessment for all students in the classroom. Generally, most assignments are made in October. As soon as you secure your session day and time, you can start calling the classroom for your weekly session. Once you've been assigned a student, you are ready to sign up for your weekly tutoring session using the scheduling calendar. To schedule a session, go to app.chapter1.org and sign in using the same username and password used when you register. Please use Google Chrome when signing into the application. 
Google Chrome is the preferred browser and will provide the best experience. The scheduling calendar is shared by you and your teacher and is where you will schedule your weekly tutoring sessions. Before your team starts tutoring, the teacher will block out times on the calendar that are not available for tutoring. You and your teammates are welcome to sign up during any time that is not blocked out or already taken by another tutor. The calendar is a Monday through Friday calendar and is date specific. There are two options for scheduling a session. You can schedule a session that repeats each week or you can schedule a one-time session that does not repeat each week. To schedule a repeating session, review the calendar for a day and time that is available and click in the cell to open the scheduling window. Under repeat status, select repeat weekly. When you select repeat weekly, your session time will appear at the same day and time on the calendar each week for the duration of the school year. Click save when you're done. If you find you are not able to make a weekly tutoring session due to a conflict, you can schedule a one-time session. A one-time session does not repeat each week. To create a one-time session, click in the cell for the time you wish to select. From the scheduling window under repeat status, Select Do Not Repeat. Notice you now have two entries on the calendar. To free up time, should another volunteer need to reschedule their session, delete your original event for that week. To delete a repeating event for a specific week, select This Event Only to keep future entries from being deleted. If you are tutoring more than one student in the classroom, you will need to schedule a new session for each student. To schedule the session, Click on the selected student dropdown. Select the correct student and then add your entry to the schedule. You will notice the selected student's name and your name will appear in the cell. Because you share this schedule with your teacher, he or she can also make changes to the calendar. In the event of a field trip, assembly, or other special activity when students are not available, the teacher can temporarily block those times when they are not in the classroom. If this happens, the block will show up in the calendar. If the temporary block time interferes with your session, you'll receive an email that your student is not available for tutoring. Prior to your first session, it may be helpful to spend some time getting familiar with the activities in the platform. The platform includes a practice feature that simulates a live session. To practice a session, open the practice screen by clicking on the practice link. Open any activity to begin. Notice the student view on the bottom of the screen. As you click through the activities, you will see a representation of what the student will see during the session. To close the student view, click on the orange X. To reopen the student view, click on the student view icon. To return to the home page, click the end button in the upper right hand corner. When you are ready to meet with your student for the weekly tutoring session, go to app.chapter1.org and sign into the application. The first screen presented is the tutor home screen and where you'll start your session. From the home screen, you can view your student's name and the day and time of your session. If you have two students assigned to you, you can select the correct student for the session by clicking on the Change Student drop-down list. There are two options for starting a session. Start a classroom session or start a home session. Our training today will focus on starting a classroom session. And if tutoring at home becomes available for your student, we will contact you. To begin, click Start Classroom Session. This will prompt the system to locate the classroom computer and generate a phone number. If you attempt to start a session earlier than your assigned time, you'll get a prompt that reminds you that the session has not started yet. You may begin your session early if there's not another session already in progress. Before starting a session early, please check the calendar. The system allows for one volunteer to be connected to the classroom computer at a time. If there is a session in progress, you will get a message to try again in three minutes. Click yes if you would like to start your session early. As the system generates the phone number, notice the information on the right side of the screen. This information includes the school name, the teacher name, also known as the classroom, your student's gender, and your student's reading level. This information is always available by clicking on the child info link at the top of each screen. Once the classroom computer is identified, 
The system will generate a phone number. Please don't save this number. A new number will be generated for your next session. If your phone number does not appear, there may be an issue with your classroom computer and you should contact support for assistance. As you wait for the system to generate a phone number, you always have the option to contact support or restart your session. Once the phone number is available, use your mobile or office phone and call the phone number you see on the screen. The call will be answered by the classroom phone greeter. We have one student assigned to answer the phone calls as the phone calls are incoming. Hello. Hi, can I please speak to Jeremiah? Uh-huh. She'll go over and grab him, and he'll come on a couple seconds later, and he's always excited. Hello, dear. Hi, Jeremiah. It's Brian, your reading partner. Ask him what he's... If your student is present, click Student Available. This will advance you to the next screen, where you can select your student's reading level. If your student is not available, click Phone Answered, but Student Unavailable. This will automatically generate a report to let us know that your student was not present for this session. You'll also get a prompt to reschedule your session. Once you have your student on the phone, select a reading level. The reading level information is suggested by the teacher and located above the reading level circles. Feel free to move your student's reading level up or down throughout the year. When you're ready to begin, click continue to launch the flashcard activity. Flashcards is a great way to get your student acclimated to the tutoring session. There may be times when it is unclear if the student is viewing the same material as you. To view a representation of the child's screen, click on the icon at the top of the screen, and a window will appear which shows you what the child ought to see on their screen. This will help you direct them if they are unsure of what to do, or if it's unclear they are viewing what you sent. This feature is a guide only and should not replace reaching out to chat support for assistance. If the child reports that they are not able to see what you sent, contact chat support so they can verify what is presented on the screen. Tutor Portal has a built-in message tool that makes it easy to send and receive messages to and from your teacher. Every time you visit the Tutor homepage, you can view any new messages received. To send a message to your teacher, Click on the message link from the menu. Click on create a new message and type the message to the teacher. When you're done, click send message. Please note that we encourage teachers to communicate with their tutors as often as possible, but some teachers may not have the time to routinely check and reply to messages. If you have a question that needs to be addressed by your teacher and you've not received a response within three to four days, you can contact your support representative by clicking on the support tab or by sending an email to help at chapter1.org. While we do everything possible to ensure you have a successful session with your student, there are times where you may need support during a session or need to report a problem. Let's first take a look at what you should do if you need help during an active session. During your time with your student, you may encounter a technical issue, and it's important these issues be addressed quickly. Please do not ask your student's teacher for help. We have chat support agents standing by to help you with any problem you may encounter during the session. Our live chat support agents have direct remote access to the tutoring computer in the classroom and can resolve most issues within a few seconds. There are a few generic issues that you might encounter that can be quickly fixed by the live chat team. For example, an audio level that is too low, a window that may be blocking the tutor application, or confirmation that the student can view the activity that you sent. Anytime you encounter a problem that affects the quality of your session, please contact a live chat support agent immediately. Don't wait until the session is over to let us know that you had a problem. There are three options available should you need help when tutoring your student. Live chat, go to assist, and phone support. To reach a support agent using live chat, click on the orange bar located in the bottom right corner of the tutoring application. The support agent will acknowledge your presence in the chat room and you can begin the chat. Most volunteers have access to live chat. However, if your organization does not allow live chat, we do have other options available. To view other support options, click on the help options link at the top of the page. Please remember to have the school and teacher name available when using a support option other than live chat. 
Let's take a moment to review the other options available. If your organization allows GoToAssist, go to www.gotoassist.com forward slash SB forward slash chapter one. Once you're logged in, follow the prompts to connect with the chat support agent. You are welcome to call the 800 number for assistance. However, response time may be slower. For phone support, dial 1-800-975-3452, extension 8. During your session, you may experience an issue that disrupts or makes it difficult to work with your student. To report a disruption, click the Disrupted link at the top of the page and select a problem from the drop-down menu. While this does not replace contacting a live chat agent, it does give us valuable information about your session. We know there are times when you may have concerns or would like to speak with a staff member. If you would like a staff member to contact you directly, you can send us a message using the support link on the homepage. You can expect to receive a response within 24 to 48 hours. After each and every session, we ask that you provide us with brief feedback on your tutoring experience. While feedback after every session may seem unnecessary, it does provide us with helpful information that might impact your next session as well as the sessions of your fellow teammates. We've tried to make it quick and easy and appreciate your entries. When you signed up to be a volunteer tutor, you were asked to read and agree to IFL's child safeguarding policy. Like all organizations working with young children, we take safeguarding seriously and believe this is everyone's responsibility. During the tutoring session, your student may share something with you that you might find concerning. We want to make sure you feel prepared and confident in what you should do if that happens. If a child shares something with you that causes you to be concerned for their safety and well-being, you are required by law to report your concerns to Child Protective Services. We understand that you might feel upset in the event that a child discusses something that leads you to suspect abuse or maltreatment. But please remember, your reaction can have an impact on the child you're talking to. So try and do the following. As best you can, document what the child has told you, but do not ask probing questions. Be reassuring and validate the child. I understand that may have been very scary. Refrain from being emotional or showing shock. I'm glad you were able to tell me it's not your fault. Do not make promises to the child. You might let the child know that you cannot promise to keep this a secret, but you will make sure to let someone know who can help. Allow the child to finish his or her thoughts and then gently end the session. For example, you might say, I see that reading may be difficult for you today. Let's end the session and we'll read again next week. When you end your session, immediately report your concerns to the Child Protective Services hotline. This is a confidential and anonymous hotline. When calling Protective Services, provide the hotline operator with the information to the best of your ability. They may ask you questions that you cannot answer due to limited information. That's okay. Simply tell them what you know. Do not judge for yourself if the story the child shares constitutes abuse, is valid, or true. If you're concerned, you must report. The agency will determine if further investigation is necessary. Reporting phone numbers can be found in the eLearning Center. After you've made your report, fill out the IFL Incident Report found in the TutorMate Learning Center. And email the report to childsafety at chapter1.org. Do not provide details in this report. The incident report is only used as verification that the Child Protective Agency was notified. We appreciate your support in helping us keep children participating in TutorMate safe. At the end of each year, we encourage our volunteer tutors to visit their school and celebrate the great reading work done with their student. As we approach the end of the school year, please check with your organization's tutor coordinator for more information. Ninjago? Yeah, Ninjago, what about you?